<clears throat> another history lesson that I think you guys will like it so uh, there we go so this was hard because uh, I want to talk about uh, Constantine the Great he's one of my favorite Roman emperors and the creator of uh, Constantinople first Christian emperor great military man and controversial but there's so many uh, great podcasts out there who already talk about the man then there was Diocletian but once again already covered I said why not someone else someone who hasn't had the spotlight for some time or at all all right and I picked you ready for this one John Ducas Veristez probably butchered his name a little bit there but you know I'll uh, post a link about this guy below and uh, you try and figure it out <laughs> maybe you're better at it than I am but yes, that was his name. Um, <clears throat> try and saying that five times fast. All right. Well, who is this guy, right? And why the heck am I talking about him? Well, for starters, he ruled the emperor, that the empire of Nicaea. Uh, what the hell is Nicaea? All right. Probably won't find it on that on the map because it's called something else. Nicaea today is the modern Turkish city of Iznik. Once again, probably uh, pronouncing that wrong. Bad with uh, pronouncing things. So, you know, don't mind me. Um, I like Nicaea better, so that's what we're going to call it. Uh, Alrighty, so way back around, uh, you know, 13th century, I want to say uh, 1204, Nicaea was established. And this is because Constantinople fell the first time by the Crusaders. Yes, he had Christians attacking Christians. And the Catholic Pope fighting the makers of Orthodoxy. Go figure. Anyways, uh, Byzantium falls the first time and gets taken over by the Latins. So Italians, French, Germans, yada, yada, yada. And this causes the remaining uh, royalty of Byzantium, the ones that make it out alive, um, to flee and create their own kingdoms. And one of them being uh, the Empire of Nicaea. Uh, fast forward a little bit, and you have John Ducas Vadestes. This guy I'm talking about right now, who also became an Orthodox saint. I don't think he's recognized in any other Christian religion, so I'm going to say he's probably just a Orthodox saint. I'll explain to you in a little minute why. Uh, big stuff, I know, but uh, you know. Like I said, more on that later. He was of noble blood, born in northeastern Greece, so, you know, Thrace, East Macedonia, around there. If you want to pull up a map and follow this, be my guest. Huh. So his father may have been a general, uh, Basil Veristes. Of course, you know, nothing's ever perfect in life. Uh, so he had a great upbringing, educated, and, uh, you know, military family. John suffered from uh, epileptic seizures. Not good. But that didn't take away from his greatness. Oh no. Despite his sickness, uh, this guy expanded his kingdom, gaining much of the Greek Isles, uh, fought off and uh, maintained relations uh, with the uh, Sultanate of Rum, so, you know, the Ottomans, the Turks, and remained friendly with uh, the Bulgarians, who assisted him to uh, try and recapture the homeland of Constantinople from the dreaded Latins. Oh, and also he recovered much of the Balkans of, with uh, relatively ease. He was just that good. But what made him so good, though? Was he like the Greek Rambo? Or just, you know, lucky maybe? I don't know. Didn't really get along with the Pope uh, at the time. Um, he had many disagreements on, you know, dogmatic issues and religion and such. Uh, I would go into that, but I'd probably bore you to death already. And, um, uh, no, I'm just not going to, you know, dive into that if you want be my guest. Um, he was a patron of the arts and science, so, you know, he loved, uh, you know, the, the beyond, so he had that going for him. He made it very easy to live if uh, you were under his domain. Um, he was a real, you know, man of the people, you could say. He was a great administrator, you know, didn't like the rich that much, uh, took care of the poor, um, even made sure his son uh, took note of that. Just a uh, roundabout great ruler who uh, took care of his people very well. 
So uh, John ruled for 33 years, lived till he was 62, and died of natural causes. Came king at 29. Yes, impressive. Uh, I'd say he lived a very, very impressive and successful life. He was all about the East and the greatness of the Greeks. Screw the West was his motto. Not really, but eat and care for the lands. He led the pathway to the recovery of Constantinople, back into his Greek brethren hands. And rightfully, it was called the father of the Greeks. Not the literal father of the Greeks. He didn't, you know, birth a bunch of Greeks or make them out of clay. He just, you know, that was his title because he was favored by them. Years later, after his death, uh, his crypt was opened, and to their surprise, guess what? His body was not decayed. That's right, you know where this is heading. Uh, this led to uh, stories told of uh, miracles connected to him and his memory. And this, of course, uh, bolstered him up to saintlyhood, where he's titled Saint John the Merciful. Not to be confused with the other John the Merciful. So I guess his title would be John Batistez the Merciful. Or Saint John. You, you get the idea. <clears throat> Here's a little uh, interesting story. Um, a contemporary account during the reign of uh, Andronicus. I'm not going to say his last name because I really can't pronounce it. But uh, another ruler of uh, Byzantium later on down the line uh, mentions around the time when the Turks invaded Magnesia, which is, you know, in and around the area. On several occasions, the uh, castle guardsmen had witnessed a lit candle circling around the city walls. He sent men to investigate the phenomenon, but to no avail. Then, the uh, deaf-mute brother of the guardsmen was sent, and he was given a revelation. And was completely healed upon his return. Wow. He said that uh, the area where the lit candle had appeared, he found a man of a grand royal stature. He found a man of a grand royal stature. I guess it meant he was big. Um, he loudly urged the Christians to continue their uh, defense. So look at that. You had a uh, spirit of uh, St. John over here, you know, leading men and, um, you know, I guess, uh, boosting their morale. Later, the, uh, the brother of this uh, guard recognized the image of the man he had seen when visiting the Holy Shrine of uh, St. John Batistez. And there you go. Uh, since then, John was uh, recognized as a saint, and his memory was set to be honored on November 4th. They say his remains are still deep down in the city you know, being guarded by crypto Christians, so you know, Christians pretending to be someone else, awaiting his resurrection to liberate the city. Like, you know, why isn't there a movie about this guy? <laughs> Just one of the many reasons why I have this guy tattooed on my arm. And there you have it. Questions, comments, just send it below, guys. There's a lot to take in, but, um, uh, I just think this guy was too important and, uh, such a grand story not to be told, so, you know, maybe he was told greater somewhere else on paper or some podcast, but I didn't hear it or see it, so here I am telling it to you guys. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, and until next time, see you all later. Peace.